So uh, we're starting today with the easiest kind of sequences, uh, and I'd like to turn to this page. Uh, but we don't have time for this page because today was a late start, so we have a really short class. So we're going to go to this page. And I want you to go off in the margin for just a moment because that's a little too difficult. But let's say I had a 1 to start with. And then I add 5 and I have 6. And then I add 5 and I have 11, comma, dot, dot, dot. Do you guys remember when you add something, it's obviously different than when you multiply by something every time. Did you, do you remember some terminology? Like, what's that thing called that you add? You learned it last year. I know you learned it. The thing you add each time is called the uh, something something. Okay, it's called the common difference. All right, so if you add it each time, why are they calling it a difference? Because a difference is the answer to a subtract problem. And so do you get if I take 6 minus the 1, I can get 5, which is the common difference. The difference between all of those is 5, right? Okay, so the common difference is 5. Okay, next thing is, what if we take 1 and then we times it by 5, and I get 5, and it actually isn't quite as big the first time. It was 6, now it's 5. But I'm going to times it by 5 again, and I get 5 times 5, which is 25, comma, dot, dot, dot. Do you get that as not a common difference between the terms? It's a common... Anybody pull this up? It starts with an R. Close. Ratio. Common ratio. Ooh, ouch. Okay. I'm actually aware. I looked it up. All right. So uh, the common difference and the common ratio are key here. One of them is when you're going to be adding, and that kind is called arithmetic. It's spelled like arithmetic, but you say it arithmetic. That's an arithmetic sequence, and this one is a geometric sequence. All right, now I'm going to teach you the formulas you use so that if I wanted to say, do you get this pattern? Do you get both patterns? Could you tell me the tenth number by just blindly following the pattern? Sure, but it would take you a long time, right? And there must be some mathematical way to jump right to the tenth term. And there is. There's a formula. And if you follow this little formula, it's stick in things like the common difference, what you started with, and which term you want, you can jump right to the tenth term without having to get all nine terms in front of it. Okay? All right, so that's the, that's the main job for today. But to start with, this looks really weird, and it's a way of telling you a sequence. There's three different ways. These are all completely different ways of telling you a sequence of numbers. And this first sequence tells you a sub n, which is like amount sub any. It's like any term is given by this formula, and you start with n is 1, and then it just gets bigger. All right, so would everybody please just put in n as 1 into the formula and figure out what you get. If you put in a 1, what do you get? How did you get a 1 on the top? We had a 5 on the top. Because it's 5 to the 0, and 5 to the 0 is really 1. All right, so then 1 over 3. Good. One third is the first term. Everybody find the second term. Just use the same process. Dr. B, what are we putting in? Sorry, um, well, we just put in one a second ago. Use logic. Two. Ooh, he's sharp. You can do this. Five to the two minus one is... I'm, I was still with you, but I'm going to come back to you because you're distracted. All right, I'm going to go to Elizabeth. What is the top going to be? Five. Five over three squared is... Good, so five-ninths. Raise your hand if you had five-ninths. Now, if you look at those two, don't go and try to find the common difference because it's not quite that easy. Let's just find the third term. Everybody, stick in three, figure out the third term. Cooper, what'd you get? 
Now look back at those three terms. What's happening on the top? We're timesing by what each time? We're timesing by five each time. What are we timesing by on the bottom each time? Three. Could it be said that we are timesing by five thirds each time? See what I mean? So we can figure out a common difference. No, nope. thank you, common ratio. We can figure out a common ratio. Now that we can look back at them, and, and could I have done it the way I did it? Sure, but there's actually an easier way. You just take this divided by this, but you better be sure that it actually works. So then you take this divided by that, and you see if you get the same exact thing. We're not going to do that right now. You can trust that this one, it is timesing by 5 over 3 every single time. Okay, so that's called the common ratio. All right, now let's do the next one. Everybody look at number 2, and now that I've explained how these things work, I can just say, here's your formula. But that's look different looking. It's the same, if I tell you it's the same exact process, will you know where to start? Hope so. Find me the first three terms. What, comma, what, comma, what. Pausing for a second. So hopefully you figured out that you just wanted to put in a one into this formula. And then you got 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. Raise your hand if you knew it started with 1. All right. Martin, what's the next term then when you put in 2? So what's the next blotch here, right here? 3 is correct. And the next one after that, just do it in your head quick. Mr. H, yes, one, three, five, and it seems to be just counting out the odd numbers. All right, and that does, sounds easy, you know, one, three, five, I can do that a long time. Yeah, great, what if I ask for the 137th term? Well, in this case, we could stick 137 in, and you could go, okay, two times 137 minus one, and you could know the answer. So we've got a formula for it. Do you get on the other ones that we started with, like over here? We didn't have a formula for them, but I'm going to show you a formula for it. All right, so everybody, without further ado, this one is different. Number five, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying you can't do it the same exact way. I will tell you just this. A1, you could think of it as amount one, is seven. And that is the first term. What I want you to figure out is what are the next two terms. Pausing for a second. See if you can understand a formula like this. I know some of you never figured this out, but let's see if you can understand this. It says 2 minus a sub n. Hmm. Well, what's a sub n? Well, you got to compare it with a sub n plus 1. Well, okay. So let's say, let's label this one a sub n. Just say, like, that's a term. Which one would be a sub n plus 1? The one after it. What would the one in front of it be? a sub n minus 1. And you guys did learn this last year. It's called recursive. And I get it's been a long time since you have. But really, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. You take 2 minus the term. So 7 is the term we have. We take 2 minus that term, which would be negative 5. Did anybody guess negative 5? All right. We had a few. Four or five of you. Good job. Then... What do you do again? It says take 2 minus the term, which in this case is negative 5. So 2 minus the negative 5, you know, previous term to it. 2 minus the previous term would be 2 plus 5, which is 7. And look at that. It's just going to cycle back and forth between 7 and negative 5 and then 7 and then negative 5. And then. I know, those are weird. 
So, this is an arithmetic. What are they doing each time? They're adding four. Do you get it? Wouldn't be too hard to just like go, okay, I'll just keep adding four until you get to the sixth term. That'd be pretty easy. But when they ask for the 20th term, you may be getting kind of annoyed because you'll have to do it so many times. And when they ask for the nth term, you'd be totally toast. Like you couldn't use that way. So you need a way. Here's your way. Everybody write this down. Seriously, I know you've got it on your iPad, but the fact of you writing it out will help you, your brain will start asking questions like, what the heck is A? What do you think A is? Take a guess. A is the starting term. Do you notice that after the equal sign, and the last, like, three formulas we've had, you always start with the starting term. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. And A sub N, I want you to write the word any term. A sub N, I want you to think of that as kind of like there's an A-N-Y there. Get out, it's kind of like any, A-N-Y. See what I did there? It's like any term. You take the starting value, whatever they give you, they'll give you a starting value. And then we're going to do some stuff to it. Okay, question. Do you have some scratch paper? Yes, come on over. Okay, so N is the number. of the term like the fourth term n equals four so n is the number of the term you want so if they say i want the ninth term well then n is nine and d is called the common i said it before difference You can force yourself to write this. You will remember it better. Any term is given by the starting term plus n minus 1, where n is which number term you want, times the common difference. All right, now this is really important to understand, so we're going to park here for a few minutes until you really get this. So let's say we start with 5. And let's say we add 2. Your brain's really good at doing that because it's simple. So 5 plus 2 is? Plus 2 is? Plus 2 is? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, you're really good at doing a few like that. But what if I said, what's the 37th term? That would take you a long time. But if you use this formula, the 37th term, here's what you'd do. You'd need to use this formula and... I'm going to rewrite it right here. A sub n is any term. Well, I want the 37th, so I'm going to call it A sub 37. Will be A, what do you think A is in this case? 5. Plus n minus 1, so I don't want 37 there. I want 37 minus 1, so 36. times the common difference. The common difference here is 2. Now, it's really critical that you understand why it's n minus 1. So let, let me explain this. If I want this term, would you agree the 11 is the fourth term? Did I need to add 2 four times to get there? If it's the fourth term, did I add two four times? No, I added two three times. That's why it's n minus one. Okay, I added two here, and then I added two here, and then I added two here. I added two three times. Because I started with this, I only had to add two three times to get to the fourth term. All right. So even though I wanted the... 37th term, I am only going to add to 36 times to get the 37th term. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So I can do this in my head. What's 36 times 2? 72 plus 5. See how I can actually do this in my head? If you just memorize that formula, it really wouldn't be that hard to be able to be like, what's the 37th term? And you'd seem like, you know, robot kid. You could be like, okay, I'm going to have 72, 72 plus 5, 77. It would be a super impressive to, to have somebody just like some little kid tell you like the 37th term would be 77. You'd seem like a genius. Well, just memorize this and you'll be a genius in that teeny tiny little way. There are some people who have memorized a really cool formula like this for what day of the week you were born on. There's a way to do that. So if you can say uh, this kid is like, says, I'm 10 years old. Uh, and you can say, well, what's your birthday? And then you can do it in your head and you'd be like, oh, you were born on a Wednesday. And a lot of people don't even know what day of the week they were born on, and so it's kind of a fun little parlor trick. You can memorize a formula like this, and you can tell people what day of the week they were born on. It even factors in leap years, which is kind of complicated. All right. So let's see if you really got this. One more like this. This time, we're going to start with 8. We're going to add 3 each time. 11, let's just add three a couple more times. What's the next one? 14, and then one more time. 17, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so if we know that's our start, I want to know what's the 30th term. Use that formula I just taught you, and this is super critical, I'm telling you. Like, a lot of the formulas that we learn later in this unit go back to this formula again, and use it plus something else. Melon, what's the A sub N in this formula? It's A sub what? Thirty. We are trying to find the thirtieth term, so it's a sub thirty is, and then a little easier question, Millen. What's the a? This a right here. What's this a? It's eight. It's the starting term. Okay, Rachel. What do I do next? I go plus. Yes. Do you understand in your head why we don't add 30 times? We add 29 of the thing. I hope you guys do, because we already got the first one right here. We're going to add 29 more. How many? What are we going to add each time? And that's called the common difference. There you go. So 29 times three, ooh, that's a pain. Why don't I just do this in my head? I can distribute it, see? Three times three is 90 minus three. See what I did there? Okay, so 87 plus eight, 95. Raise your hand if you had 95. Sweet. All right. All right. Yeah, that's a legit hand raise. Okay, next. We gotta learn how to do it when it's a ratio. That's the kind where they multiply by something each time. And it's a completely different formula. Here it is. What do you think A is again? Start value. And there's a not shown, but you can assume times right there. What do you think the R is? Close to rate. Ratio. Ah, you've been ratioed again. Okay. So let's go with Gwen. What do you say? Dan. Yeah. It's one of the tougher ones to explain, but you can do it. It's also here. 
Exactly. It's which term. And I think the way you said it, the number of the term you want is actually very, very good. Okay, so I'll give you a problem. We're going to start with 8 again. This time we're going to times by 2. So let's do it in our head just, just a couple times. What's 8 times 2? 16 times 2. I'm sick of it, so I'm going to stop. I think you get the idea. Okay, I could do it. I'm just saying we probably don't need to keep going forever here because we now we have a formula for it. Okay, so would you please tell me the 11th term? I strategically chose that one so you could do it in your head. The 11th term. Okay, Mariam, what do you say the A is for this problem? Times. We're going to go kind of to the other side of the equals just to make sure we get this A sub N. That means A sub 11. The 11th term is what I want. That's A sub 11. 8 times R, which is 2, to the n minus 1, so I put an 11 there. No, I don't. 11 minus 1, 10 there. So then you could do it in your head. Now, 2 to the 10th is not nice, but you could do it. 2 times 2. Just do it with me. What's that? 4. four 8. 16. 32. 64. 128. 256. 512, 12. we had to double 512, 1024, very good. It's a good question. No, you're not. No fun for you. You can handle that. Doubling a bunch of times, come on. Yeah, it's just honors. Step up. If there's any really nasty numbers, then we'd have to give you a calculator. So. Okay, well, like, controversially, like, three times two is the hardest one. You always put five on the next That's so true. No, it is. That's so true. Like, I would rather do Oh, my. I have less than that on the last time. I think I did that on my top two. Controversially, he says. No, it is, okay? All right, I believe, I believe you in your, your world, that is a true statement. All right, right here, right here, take a look at that green page. That's just me reminding you how to find terms. See, it says first four terms. So we're, we're in the homework part now. You can do this, okay? The first four terms of the sequence. Everybody, without help, you are responsible to be like, what are the first four terms of that? You can do this. Now, it tells me n is greater than or equal to 0. That means you start with what? 0. And is 0 the first term? No. You stick the n of 0 in. No, it's still 0. And in this case, it's 0. But it's not because it's n equals 0. So the first term is 0. you got to actually put it in. Okay, then we put in 1, and you get... 2 to the 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. And then you put in 2, and you get 2 to the 2nd is 4, minus 1 is 3. All of a sudden, it got a little trickier. And then you put in, well, how many do we have to do? Four terms. Okay, one more. Everybody put in 3. The pressure. So what, what do you think the final answer is? It is seven. Woo! All right. So, I think you get the idea. Just to make sure, just tell me the first term of this one. Just tell me the first term of the sequence. I know it seems scary. You can do it. What's the first term in this sequence?
One over one, which is one. Very good. Okay, now what I actually think you should do. The red page, both of them. This page, just these, the end. You don't have to go any further. If you practice that tonight, you'll remember it. Otherwise, you'll get more and more lost. Strongly recommend doing your homework. That's all I got for the video for today.